Welcome to chapters 9, 10, and 11 in your online World Regional Geography course. Chapter 9 introduces South Asia, chapter 10 introduces East Asia, and then chapter 11 introduces Southeast Asia. So again, I'd like to provide a real quick overview of what the chapter is going to entail and to try to give you some form of a foundation as to what are the key uh, components and content to be derived from this, uh, this chapter. So let's begin with chapter 9, uh, South Asia. Now, the Himalayan mountain ranges border South Asia to the north. Nepal is located along this border and is somewhat of a buffer state between India and China. Nepal has a high population growth rate and most people work in agriculture. Deforestation is a major environmental concern and a primary cause of landscape erosion. Landlocked and poor, Nepal struggles to maintain a stable government and adequate public services. South Asia was colonialized by Britain for about 90 years. Uh, colonialism brought a structured administration, a railroad system uh, with transportation, large port cities used for exports of goods from the interior. The political borders were established for South Asia by British colonializers based on religious affiliation and economic advantages. Conflicts continue in mountainous Kashmir and the tropical Sri Lanka. Kashmir's remote territory in the northern part of the realm is divided between Pakistan, China, and India. All three countries have nuclear weapons. Sri Lanka's majority Buddhist population is Sinhalese and is based in the southwest, controlling most of the island. Sri Lanka's minority, Tamil, population is Hindi and is based out of Jaffna Peninsula in the northeast. Port cities of South Asia are centers for international trade and development. There is a wide disparity between the rural poor and the affluent elites. India has been developing a strong economy based on growing information sector, health care, and manufacturing. Motor vehicles and computer technologies are emerging in India and competing worldwide. Pakistan's economy struggles under the high population growth and Islamic extreme in the country. Hindu and Buddhist traditions are first developed in South Asia. The concept of the caste system uh, has created socioeconomic layers in the culture that is being tempered by high urbanization rates. Buddhism has a number of branches that can be geographically identified as Eastern, Northern, and Southern. Now, moving into Chapter 10, East Asia. Well, East Asia is anchored by Communist China, a large country that dominates the physical region. High mountains on its western borders have isolated China. The peripheral regions of Tibet, Western China, Mongolia, and Manchuria act as buffer states that protect the core Han Chinese heartland in China proper, where most of the population lives. Now, to boost foreign trade and to increase its manufacturing sector, China has established special economic zones, otherwise known as SEZs, S -E -Z, uh, along its coast in hope of attracting international businesses. Urbanization and industrialization have prompted a major rural-to-urban shift in the population. Now, Taiwan is a very small island off the southeast coast of China. It has developed into an economic tiger with high-tech manufacturing and high incomes. The island has a separate government from the mainland China and has a capitalist economy. There has been historic tension between Taiwan and Beijing ever since the nationalists moved here in 1948. Economic trade between Taiwan and mainland China has brought the two sides closer together. Now, Japan is made up of a number of large islands. After its defeat in World War II, Japan worked to recover and become a more manufacturing country and the second largest economy in the world. Although the title is now held by China, Japan has a homogeneous society in which about 99% of the population is Japanese. Family sizes are low and the population has begun to decline in numbers, which is causing economic concern about the lack of entry-level workers. 
Lastly, Korea is uh, split between an authoritarian, uh, sorry, <laughs> an authoritarian, a controlled North Korea, and a capitalist South Korea. North Korea is isolated with a weak economy. Its citizens are denied basic human rights. Now, South Korea has developed into one of the economic tigers of Asia. South Korea has a strong manufacturing sector and produces high-tech electronics and information technology. Thousands of Korean and U.S. soldiers remain stationed on the demilitarized zones between the two Koreas. Now, the last chapter, Chapter 11, introduces Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia consists of two main geographic regions, the mainland portion that borders China and the insular region that consists of islands and portions of them between Asia and Australia. The large island of Borneo is split between the three countries, the Brunei, Malaysia, and Indonesia. The only region of Southeast Asia that was not colonialized by European countries was the Kingdom of Siam, which is part of the current country of Thailand. This French colonized region has been often referred to as the French Indochina. Britain, Holland, Portugal, and Spain were also primary colonizers of this realm. Southeast Asia is diverse in both its human and physical landscapes. Tropical climates dominate the realm with mountainous and coastal regions that cover the mainland surfaces. This realm has a high rate of seismic activity with many active volcanoes and, a susceptible, and are quite susceptible to continued earthquake activity. All the main world religions can be found there. Indonesia is the most populous Muslim country in the world. East Timor and the Philippines are the two predominantly Christian countries in Asia. Buddhists and Buddhism is the dominant religion in mainland region, and both Malaysia and Singapore have a sizable Hindu minority group. Indonesia has the fourth largest population in the world. Half of its people live on the island of Java. The Indonesian island of Bali has a Hindu majority and is a notable tourist destination. The island of Timor is divided between an Indonesian western half and an independent eastern half of East Timor, which is a former Portuguese colony. Well, again, we are covering quite a bit of content this week, uh, but I do hope that you enjoy reading through this and working through not just the discussions, but also some of the videos that I've also added to this course's module. Um, a lot of the geography now, I think those are really high, fast-paced, high energy, uh, really enjoyable uh, ways to perceive these regions. And what's really exciting about especially parts of, you know, looking at the Asias in particular, is that being at our college, we have so many international students. Perhaps you're one of them. And I would love to hear your story. I'd love to hear about your family, why you're, you know, why you're here, what you're studying, what do you plan on doing. Uh, I have a student that I had met uh, who was from South Korea. He's out here studying uh, business. And he's really deciding for himself, should I go back? Uh, to South Korea? Or am I going to stay here and try to start a new life and bring my family? And it's just really interesting to hear these developments because, you know, chances are you're from these locations. You know, my family's been here for three generations, so we're not dealing with that trying to decide if I'm staying here or going there. And it's just really an exciting time to, to learn about that, especially from your peers. Well, nonetheless, I hope you enjoy this week's module, and uh, we'll talk soon.